another in our series of videos on synthesis, this time our target molecule is going to be 1,3-dichlorobenzene. or meta-dichlorobenzene. And again, we have the challenge immediately that chlorine is an ortho-para director. It's a deactivating substituent, but it's an ortho-para director, but we want our two chlorines to be meta to one another. deactivating, it's not strongly deactivating like a nitro group or a sulfonic acid or an acetyl group. It is still an ortho-para director because the lone pair on chlorine can resonate in and activate the ortho in the para position. So we know that we can't chlorinate monochlorobenzene. If we were to chlorinate monochlorobenzene, we would get a mixture of ortho and para dichlorobenzene, not the meta which means these chlorines must have been something else to begin with. In this case, we can productively work backwards knowing that another way of introducing chlorine to the ring would be by the Sandmeyer reaction where we take a uh, amino benzene, in this case, 1,3-diaminobenzene, and we react that with nitrous acid, usually generated in situ from sodium or potassium nitrate and HCl, and we make the diazonium salt, which can be reacted with cuprous chloride in the Sandmeyer reaction. These are also ortho para directors, so we know that that's problematic, but we also know that we can readily convert an NO2 group into an NH2 group. So if we had 1,3-dinitrobenzene, it would be a straightforward matter to make that into 1,3-diaminobenzene. And we know that we can get 1,3-dinitrobenzene directly from nitrobenzene, because now this is a meta director. It is a strongly deactivating meta director. But nitration is an easy enough reaction to, to run. You can simply increase the concentration of nitric acid or increase the temperature or both in order to force up to three nitro groups to go on the ring. Trinitrotoluene, the well-known explosive, is made by taking toluene and just exhaustively nitrating it under fairly harsh nitration conditions. So now we can turn around and work forwards. We know that we're going to start by making mononitrobenzene and then make dinitrobenzene, and then reduce that to the diamino compound, followed by introducing the chlorine with the Sandmeyer reaction. So working forward, starting from benzene, we're going to react that with HNO3 concentrated, 71%, and H2SO4 also concentrated 98%. That's going to mononitrate the benzene. And then we're going to continue with concentrated nitric and concentrated sulfuric acid. But this time, because we have the deactivating substituent on there, we're going to have to heat it up. that second nitro group on. To put the third nitro group on, we would either heat it even more or more likely switch to 100% nitric acid. 100% nitric acid is actually made by mixing concentrated sulfuric and concentrated nitric acid and then distilling out the pure nitric acid from that mixture of concentrated acids. It's not a very pleasant procedure to run, but it works well. Now we want to reduce those nitro groups to the corresponding amino groups. This time, let's use hydrogen gas and maybe nickel. That's an excellent way to do this. At 30 atmospheres in an alcohol solvent, often ethanol. And then we can convert that to 1,3-diamino benzene. 
And now we're just one step away from our desired product. What we will do is react this with potassium nitrite, KNO2, and HCl, and Cooper's chloride, copper one chloride. into chlorine by way of the diagonium salt. by chloride ion. Copper 1 is actually very good at bonding to pi systems, in particular triple bonds. We've seen that in the gadamer cup reaction, and we also see it here. The copper will complex to this nitrogen and help it break. It's postulated that the intermediate is actually a positive charge in an sp2 hybrid orbital. That is not usually very stable. So it's likely that the copper one is necessary to stabilize that intermediate and help the nitrogen leave rather than nitrogen leaving spontaneously. Chloride ion then would come in and readily attack that positive charge, and then it would do it again over on the other side because we've got a second diazonium salt over here. Whether or not that positive charge is a discrete intermediate or formed at the same time as the nitrogen is leaving chloride coming in in a concerted step, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but generally, sp2 hybridized positively charged is not such a great idea. So this is a shorter synthesis. Step one, nitration. Step two, nitrate again. Step three, reduce those nitro groups to the amino groups. And then step four, the Sandmeyer reaction. the amino group to just about anything else. The Sandmeyer reaction can also be used to convert the amino groups to bromides or cyanides, and analogies of the Sandmeyer reaction also allow you to convert the NH2 group into a hydroxyl group to make a phenol, or into an iodide, or into just a plain old hydrogen and remove that group entirely. So you can, in fact, use the nitro group kind of as a temporary protecting group like we did with the sulfonic acid and then when you're ready, remove it by converting it to the NH2 group and removing that using KNO2 and HCl to make the diazonium salt. The diazonium salt is treated with hypophosphorous acid, H3PO2, will be replaced by a hydrogen. That's a reducing acid. 